Anyone who grows plants or vegetables knows how important it is to have healthy soil that is full of nutrients. Crops, for example, absorb lots of nitrates, phosphates and potassium compounds out of the soil and incorporate them into their plant tissues. When we harvest that crop, most of those nutrients are removed from the field or vegetable patch. If you were to continue to do this, you will deplete the soil of nutrients and it won't grow healthy crops again. So farmers adopt many techniques to restore the nutrients in the soil after harvesting. They can add artificial fertilizers, which add phosphates, nitrates, and potassium compounds back into the soil. They can add manure, which is full of nutrients that, that can be decomposed and the nutrients can be returned to the soil. Finally, farmers can use certain crops that help return nitrates back to the soil. Gardeners will use compost, which is decomposed organic matter that is full of nutrients that can be returned to the soil and used by future plants. Microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi play an important role in making compost. Only organic matter goes in the compost pile and the aim is to try break down the organic molecules into soluble molecules as quickly as possible. It takes a good two years to make good compost, but you can speed up the process. These factors affect how quickly microorganisms can decompose organic matter, temperature, oxygen levels, pH, moisture levels, presence of heavy metal pollutants, and the types of organic matter that you put in the compost pile all affect the enzyme action of bacteria and fungi. When trying to encourage fast decomposition in a compost pile, I personally would turn the pile every week to introduce more fresh oxygen into the pile. The microorganisms need to be aerobically respiring as it is a faster process and breaks down organic matter quicker. I had a thermometer measuring the temperature and I was aiming to keep the pile above 40 degrees Celsius, but would often have periods of the temperature being above 70 degrees Celsius. The reason compost gets so hot is because the microorganisms release heat as they aerobically respire and that causes the temperature to rise because it is trapped in the centre of the pile. You might think that 70 degrees Celsius would kill the bacteria, but thermophilic, meaning heat-loving bacteria, thrive in these conditions, and it handily kills plant pathogens that could infect your soil. pH can be affected by the ingredients you add to the compost pile. I would be careful not to over-add citrus fruits to the pile and make it too acidic, and mixing the pile helps to dilute the acid within the pile. I would not add anything inorganic to the pile because it won't break down, and of course, heavy metals such as copper inhibits microbial activity, so they don't go in either. Landfill sites are a problem because if lots of organic matter is sent there, you get poor decomposition, which ends up releasing more methane, a more potent greenhouse gas compared to carbon dioxide, into the atmosphere. Landfill sites are contaminated with heavy metals and you can get areas of low oxygen, which leads to anaerobic respiration, which doesn't break down organic matter as efficiently and it smells bad. A healthy compost pile should never smell bad. The nitrogen cycle shows us how nitrogen moves between the atmosphere, soil, and organisms. Nitrogen gas in the atmosphere cannot be used by the plants, but luckily there are bacteria that can convert the nitrogen gas into nitrates, which can be absorbed by the plants because they are soluble ions. Stage one of the nitrogen cycle is fixation, when nitrogen is converted into nitrates and fixed into the soil. Nitrogen fixing bacteria, which live in the soil, can convert nitrogen gas into nitrates, but you need lots of oxygen in the soil for this to happen effectively. So, farmers can plough the field to turn the soil and reintroduce oxygen if needed. They also want to make sure the field isn't waterlogged because that can also reduce oxygen levels. The worst case scenario is that there are denitrifying bacteria that can convert nitrates back to nitrogen gas, but these bacteria are mostly active in waterlogged and unplowed fields. Legumes, which are a type of crop consisting of peas and bean plants, have root nodules that are special because they are home to many nitrifying bacteria. Farmers can rotate crops where they plant legumes in the soil to replenish the nitrate levels in the soil instead of planting the same crop over and over again and depleting the soil of nitrates. Lightning can also convert nitrogen gas into nitrates mainly because of the high temperature produced by the lightning bolt 
breaking the nitrogen gas molecule apart, and the nitrogen atom is then absorbed into the soil and converted into nitrates. Industrial processes, such as the harbour process, also fixes nitrogen by converting nitrogen gas into ammonia. Stage two of the nitrogen cycle is when the nitrates are absorbed by the plants via the roots and the nitrogen is incorporated into the plants. The plants use the nitrogen to make proteins, for example. Stage three of the nitrogen cycle is when animals consume the plants and digest the plant proteins into amino acids and build their own animal proteins, which contain nitrogen. Some of that nitrogen, however, ends up as waste in the form of urea, which is found in urine. The urea enters the soil and can be broken down into ammonia, and then the ammonia can be converted into nitrates. Some bacteria in the soil make the enzyme urease, which is what converts the urea into ammonia, and then ammonia can be converted into nitrates by nitrifying bacteria. Stage four is when animals die and get decomposed by microorganisms. The nitrogen in the animal proteins and tissues is converted into ammonia by the bacteria involved in decomposition. Nitrifying bacteria can convert that ammonia into nitrates. Stage five of the nitrogen cycle is when the nitrogen is returned to the atmosphere. Again, this is done by denitrifying bacteria found in the soil, which thrive in waterlogged and low oxygen conditions. So, we have completed the triple award biology content. Expect an edited version with every lesson stitched together to make one long video perfect for cramming your revision into one session.